Okay, well, as you can see, I'm here with a special guest. I've got Jonah. Can you see yourself over there? It's so there. Yeah, you're, yes. you're there. And Jonah Lair, uh, the author Jonah Lair, is going to help me with uh, my spectrum of scientific interests and where um, actually my blog, and I suppose his blog, fits on a uh, scientific interest scale. So over there near Jonah is this lovely platinum blonde with her UV goggles and her closed toe shoes. And so she's a scientist. A lot of definitions for scientists, but we'll say this gal works for a major research university and she is published, she has funding, um, and she's very good at communicating her ideas, especially in writing, to other scientists. Sometimes though she's so enthusiastic that uh, she's very good at communicating with people who are on this side of the spectrum. This lady with the pink purse I would say is uh, pretty much non-technical, doesn't enjoy science, or so mm -hmm. she thinks, has no interest, doesn't see any use for it. Mm -hmm. So, and we all know people like that. Doesn't understand that. how it relates to her life. Exactly. So sometimes, uh, Miss Platinum Blonde scientist there can relay this, and sometimes she can't. Yeah. And we know that's sometimes. Well, and actually, first I'll talk about what I do day to day. So in my day to day job, I'm standing over here and I'm talking with scientists and I'm reading what scientists do, and then I'm able to turn around and share it with students. And there is no Nothing is implied by the gender of the student. <laughs> uh-huh, sure, sure. <laughs> and anyway, so this fellow wants to be an engineer or a scientist or a physician. Most of the time, some guy's a veterinarian or a dentist. Most, that's mostly the kind of students I have. And so they, they end up wanting to be also on this side of the spectrum. So it's my job to sort of get them there. Okay, so I'm going to move out of the way for now. If we want to stay over in this area, there are people who write technical mm -hmm. works. And Use they, lots of acronyms. Often don't understand, don't, aren't even aware that the language they're using is very technical. I mean, I don't think the, um, this swank lady wearing uh, protective glasses, um, very coolest protective glasses I've ever seen, <laughs> I don't think they're often aware that they're even using technical, obscure language. It's simply the way they speak. Uh, that's, that's a language they use every day. And I think it's often Scientists aren't sometimes even aware the language they're using sounds intimidating to them. It's just these are shortcuts. These are expressive shortcuts. Right, and so there are people who understand what they're saying, but they they're yeah. really not translating it for the general public. Yeah. They're translating it for well, other that, scientists. Yeah, that, that's a very different exercise. I mean, it's it's you know we all we all have secret private languages we use, whether it's with our spouse or with our colleagues. Um, and, and so I think it's just get another particular specific language. Um, Why don't you bring her over here? She can stand over here, maybe not here. too far, yeah. So she can interpret what the scientist is saying. So, so she's writing technical and sometimes aims towards a semi-technical audience, but okay. she's not going to be aiming towards our non-technical But I'm, what I'm really glad about is there are people like you, uh, great authors, great writers, who understand science and they're actually trying to relate this to people who may be semi-technical or the motivated non-technical audience. So I'm, Yourself, I'm, you're looking I'm, I'm awesome this lovely today, lady. by the way. Yeah. Yes, you are. Nice hair. So, yeah, I know. I, I do have a weakness for blue bracelets as well. So <laughs> do you? I thought you were going to say redheads, but there no, you go. Redheads. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, so a lot of bloggers, I think, fall into this category. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's writing really good books, uh, such as yours, uh, such as we got Rebecca Sklu, we got Carl Zimmer, yeah, and, yeah. and everybody else. You definitely can talk to these people, but you're great at interpreting it. Mm -hmm. And you, you can also then relate to yeah. someone who's maybe more motivated yeah. than someone who just has no interest in science. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, I think the aim is definitely, I think the first aim is translation. It's just trying to make the science understandable and interesting, um, trying to translate the acronyms into a language people can understand, trying to convince people that the scientific process, which is very expensive and very difficult, is actually really essential, um, that it's important to understand how the human brain works or how neurons work or, you know, what's going on on the other side of the Milky Way. So I think that's the first aim, it's just that, that mere translation, the step of translation and trying to sell, sell the science. You know, I mean, as a science writer, in my really um, less less modest moments, when I'm really being pompous and thinking grandiose thoughts, 
you know, you're also trying to bring an extra value. I think the part of what happens over here on this side of the spectrum, and I'm not talking about Ken, I'm just talking about, you know, the, the scientists actually creating, inventing, discovering the facts, is that you have to have a very specific vision, you know, a kind of tunnel vision. You know, by it just it's very difficult to also stay in touch with what's happening in other fields. So if you're a neuroscientist studying a synaptic protein, you're spending all your time thinking about the synaptic protein and the genes and other proteins it interacts with. So, so as a science writer, I think one of the blessings of not being at this end of the spectrum is you can also put the science in a larger context. You can say, not just, here's this great synaptic protein, here's how it works, not just the step of translation, but also try to make some new connections too. Um, so if you're writing about something in neuroscience, try to bring in findings from sociology or psychology or cognitive psychology or behavioral economics, trying to mash together the fields, which when you're in the fields, I think it's, it's very tough to, to do those connections when you're actually got your head down doing the research, finding the facts. Right, being rewarded for your little focus yeah. there, but it's really important. Yeah, well, so. it, it's the whole, you know, the whole brick in the cathedral metaphor, that every scientist says they're brick in the cathedral, and, and I hope that doesn't sound critical, because yeah. that's, that's why it stands up. Um, but, but when you're working on this brick, it's sometimes, I think, sometimes science writers are able to say, well, look up, look at the stained glass, the vaulted ceilings. Um, there's a larger picture here, which I think is part of what it means to, to sell a scientific idea, to put in a larger context. And that's something scientists, I think, are very interested in, it's something I think they often try to do, but I think it's, just, it's, it's very tough to do when you're also discovering the facts. Right. It's great. I like that explanation. Where's my place, other than, you know, doing my, the job I'm getting paid for? Um, I sort of see myself as standing right here, because I definitely spend a lot of time reading books like yours, books um, and blogs, and because I'm fascinated with all of science, mm -hmm. um, I can read what the scientists are writing about yeah. in certain areas. In cert you know, like astronomy, I would much prefer to read what a popularizer is writing. Yeah. Um, but stem cells, for instance, I'll read the, the technical. Anyway, so I sort of see my places reaching out. What I write is entertaining to people over here, but I know I have a good appeal to young people, or people who just never grasp how do scientists do their work? Yeah. How really they really do make an observation. They really do start with a question. There is a difference between experimental and theoretical. And these are basics that I think some people miss. I like to take and make a quirky way of looking at science and do it in an un unexpected way. Um, like you write stories, explain a concept, and mine is just well, if I pair it with something unusual that you wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm then the concept might sink in a little yeah. more. So that's sort of what I do. Hope I can grab a few of these people, at least for them to understand that day to day, science is in their life and is very valuable. And makes them better consumers and better uh, politically involved. Oh, well, Jonah, thank you so much. No, thank I appreciate you so much. Your thank you so much for having me and uh, showing me your doll collection. Yes. This is, I, I will never think about the the, the continuum of, uh, of scientific expertise the same way again. <laughs> Probably not.